You might not realize it given the focus modern science has put on Mars lately, but Venus is actually the planet that has long been considered the sister planet to Earth. This is for a variety of reasons. In terms of size, Venus is 95% of Earth's diameter, where Mars is only slightly over half the diameter. The sibling planets also have very similar densities and element composition. Of course, there are well-known downsides to Venus, including the incredible heat and atmospheric pressure at surface level. However, many people don't realize that the upper atmosphere of Venus is actually extremely interesting. At certain levels, atmospheric pressure and temperatures are actually about the same as exist on Earth today. Hey guys, this is Dave. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have a little bit of a different video. We're not focusing so much on the financials and the investment side of the company, but we're going to dig into why exactly Rocket Lab wants to send the first private mission to another planet, to Venus, what benefits that might have for the company, what they're looking to learn from this, and uh, whether this mission is really worthwhile to us as investors who are ultimately in a way funding the mission because we're partial owners of the cash that is being used to fund the mission. Please hit like and subscribe down below to support the content. We also have a link to a Discord server in the description where we talk stocks and investing and uh, just hang out and have a good time. There's also a link to my Twitter if you're interested in following me on there. And with that, let's dive into Rocket Lab's Venus mission. As many of you are likely aware, the surface of Venus is not only incredibly hot, but it's also under an incredible amount of pressure due to the gases in the Venusian atmosphere. If you were to stand on the surface of Venus, you would feel a massive 72 bars of atmospheric pressure pushing down on you. This would be the equivalent of the, to the pressure of being about a kilometer underneath the ocean on Earth and having the weight of all the water bearing down on you. Due to this insane pressure and heat, probes landing on the surface of Venus have only been able to last about 23 minutes to 2 hours. However, the cloud decks of Venus are actually very different. At about 50 kilometers to 65 kilometers above the surface, the atmospheric pressure and temperatures are about the same as on Earth. There have been several hints of interesting activity in the atmosphere of our sister planet, but unfortunately the location has been passed over in favor of missions to other locations in the solar system time and time again. As you can see in the two charts, there have actually only been eight launches to Venus since the 2000s, whereas Mars has received 17 launches in the same time frame. Recently, there has been cause to consider a renewed interest in the atmosphere of Venus. In 2005, the Venus Express orbiter found hydroxyl in Venus's atmosphere along with other clues that its chemistry may be more complex than previously thought. Japan's 2010 Akatsuki orbiter revealed previously unknown atmospheric structure and dynamics as well. And recent data from the planet also supports the idea that Venus holds more interesting surprises. In June of 2020, Scientists announced that Venus has more nitrogen in parts of its atmosphere than their models had predicted. In an unusually candid interview, astrochemist Clara Souza Silva of MIT recently said, I naively thought we knew the atmosphere of Venus quite well. We know f all about Venus. In addition to this, there has been a lot of controversy recently around the potential discovery of phosphine gas in the atmosphere of Venus. On Earth, phosphine is only created by life. We also don't know of any chemical mechanism where phosphine should be created on Venus through natural causes. Some have speculated that there could be microscopic microbial life floating around in the upper atmosphere of Venus, emitting this phosphine as a part of its life cycle. Other scientists have pushed back, saying that there is actually likely less phosphine in the atmosphere than we believed originally, or that the measurements could be incorrect. 
Personally, I'm not saying I believe that life currently exists there, but I do think even if there's a 0.5% chance that this is the case, it's definitely something that's worth being investigated further. Even in the more likely event that there is some unknown chemistry going on creating this phosphine, we would learn something new and valuable scientifically by figuring out exactly what is going on in Venus's atmosphere. In addition, there have been observed mysterious dark patches in Venus's atmosphere where something is absorbing ultraviolet and some visible spectrum light hitting the planet. These unknown absorbers, as they have been named, seem to ebb and flow over time and have an impact on the planet's weather. Once again, I'm not saying that these absorbers are life, but there is definitely something interesting and unusual going on here that we don't fully understand, and it's definitely worth looking into. This brings us back to Rocket Lab's mission to Venus and why Peter Beck would want to self-fund a mission there, costing his company 10 plus million dollars. Well, let's hear from Peter himself on this and why he thinks this is a worthy endeavor. The earliest memory I have of, um, of, of space really is standing outside with my father, uh, looking up at the night sky and him explaining to me that all of those, uh, those stars in the skies were, were suns and you know a lot of them uh, have planets around them and there could be somebody standing on that planet looking back at me. And, um, you know, that was probably a quite a bit to take in for, a, for a, you know, I don't know how old I was, but sub five years old. And, uh, and, and that was really the point in time that really you know, set my trajectory, um, you know, forever. And I look at Venus and really the, to me, the arguably that the largest question we have as a species, you know, is, uh, is life unique in this universe? Um, I don't know of a bigger question than that. And that's really the question that I'm trying to answer right back from when my father took me outside and showed me those stars. So I always promised myself if I ever had the ability to try and answer that question, that I would give that a shot, no matter how low or remote the, the, the you know the probable outcomes could be. And uh, I'm I'm in a very fortunate position now that I, I have a rocket company and an interplanetary spacecraft. So it would seem very rude to not give this a crack. You look at Venus as an analog to Earth. I mean, mm -hmm. Venus is just Earth gone bad. Um, so uh, there is there is tremendous amount of that we can you know that we can learn from Venus with respect to climate change, and and it's kind of you know Earth's sister that that is just you know just you know, gone down the wrong path. So uh, let, let's make sure that we don't go down that wrong path. And, and I think there's a tremendous amount to learn from Venus, um, you know, as a planet for our, for our own planet back here on Earth. Is there like a business case for going to other planets or does that not really matter to you? Like, is it just a matter of wanting to start a new type of exploration from the commercial space sector and, you know, profits don't matter in that uh, in that endeavor? Well, I mean, for this particular Venus mission, you know, there's a much greater cause here, right? Um, and uh, but but I do believe that if we can demonstrate this, uh, it, it fundamentally does change the way that we need to think about doing planetary science. Um, you know, if we if we can if a private company can go to Venus and even try to look for life um, for some tens of millions of dollars, then instead of spending billions of dollars on on missions once every decade, it does open a door for a platform that can go to other planets and other destinations for some tens of millions of dollars and do really meaningful um, meaningful sciences. And it also kind of changes the risk posture as well because. You know, if, if you're going to spend, you know, a decade and billions of dollars, um, your risk posture just changes because, um, you know, at some point it crosses a threshold from being, you know, it can fail to it cannot fail. Um, and when you're spending some tens of millions of dollars, you're definitely within that th threshold where you can take risk and it can fail. So you can put new sensors and take, take you know, look, look for your new technologies to do new things in a much more aggressive way. Um, so. You know, I, I think uh, I think ultimately, you know, we, we'd love to see um, lots of the photon probes, you know, proliferate through our solar system and learn as much as we can. But I guess, you know, the pure scientist in me really, really wants some of these questions answered. And I think, um, you know, everyone looks to make a contribution in their lifetime um, to the species. And, and this is this is why I say this is rude for me to not try, because this is one thing that that, that I can do that, you know, may or may not. Um, uh, incre increment our knowledge of, of the universe and our solar system and and maybe increment, increment or even answer, in, like I said, in, in my mind, the biggest question that we have is, is a species. 
As an investor in the company, it's pretty natural to ask yourself, should Rocket Lab be spending their own money on a mission like this? Shouldn't Beck be using those funds, of which you're actually a small owner being a shareholder in the company, towards something that will drive more income in the future? Well, beyond the potential for this mission to put Rocket Lab into the media spotlight, there's definitely the potential that this mission will pave the way for more paid planetary exploration missions by Photon and Electron. You can bet that NASA and various governments around the world will be watching the results of Rocket Lab's mission closely as they drive down the cost of planetary exploration from billions of dollars to just tens of millions. A success on this mission, coupled with the recent success of the capstone mission to the moon for NASA, may help Rocket Lab realize a future where photon missions are doing science all over the solar system for a profit. In addition, even though nothing has been officially announced, there have been hints that some philanthropists may be interested in donating money to support the mission so Rocket Lab will not have to foot the entire cost of the bill. There also seems to be some potential that they could sell or monetize the data collected during this mission to recoup some of their investment. So, next year's mission to Venus for Rocket Lab will go a long way in demonstrating Rocket Lab's deep space capabilities and providing extremely valuable marketing and brand building for the company. Being the first private company to send a mission to another planet is no mean feat, something that will go down in the history books for years to come. In addition, there's always the chance that Rocket Lab will make some truly awesome discoveries and cement their legacy in the space industry forever. So overall, w when I first learned about this mission, I did have some mixed feelings. On the one hand, I'm like super cool. I, I love to learn more about Venus, figure out what's going on there. I do think it should be done. But on the other hand, as an investor of Rocket Lab, should we be spending $10 million from our balance sheet on this? Is that really worth it? But um, digging into it a little more deeply, I do think it's worthwhile, especially if we get some philanthropists donating money to the cause, people who believe in, you know, advancing science, learning new things, and just learning about the solar system. And of course, uh, if they do make some amazing discoveries as Rocket Lab, uh, it'll be extremely impactful to the future of the company and really prove out this technology for potential missions for NASA and other countries in the future, where you can now send probes to other planets for $10 million. These probes used to cost billions of dollars, take maybe a decade of planning. Now you can whip one of these out in six months. It's uh, really a bright future for science, demonstrating where we can take the photon and electron platform. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this mission. I'm excited to see it move forward in 2023. Uh, what do you guys think? Are you okay with it as shareholders? Are you happy that Rocket Lab is spending their money in this way? Or would you prefer they focus all their efforts on developing Neutron and uh, saving money to shore up their balance sheet? Let me know down in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.